Hello, so good evening everyone. So thanks so much for joining this session today. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to have you this evening. Yeah, as we, I guess we'll just start as we wait for others as we join, they will catch up with us as we continue. Yeah, so today we are hosting a session that is Startup Ecosystem in Kenya and uh, how you can improve your uh, presentation skills or what does the judges or investors look up into your presentation? Yeah, how can you catch the attention or interest of your judges or the investors you are pitching your project to? So today we are lucky to have uh, Kennedy uh, with the hand of uh, so the hub in Kenya. So like, like it is a, it's a hub that uh, offers uh, incubation and uh, and support to SMEs and startups. So if you have a startup around uh, maybe lying around, you don't know how, where you can start. Maybe after this, you can talk to him and maybe you'll have uh, him help and uh, support. Yeah, so Kenneth, if you are on the call, if you can hear me, you can just take, take the mic and you can start off the session. The others will catch up as we continue. Yeah, welcome. Yes, okay, okay. I'm free. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Uh, so my, my first question, uh, do we have people from Nigeria here? Maybe by the show of hands. Humphrey, is it only Kenyans that we have in this uh, season? Jewel. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's only Kenyans. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if uh, I can share uh, my screen, then uh, I hope we can start. That is five feet. So uh, my name is Kenneth Njeh here, Head of Innovation at Sote Hub. Sote Hub is an incubation hub that is based in Mombasa, Kenya. I, am, I have been an innovation manager, incubation coordinator, hackathon facilitator in most of the yeah, hackathons. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Um, can you hear me well? Because I had some sound out there. Hello? Uh, yeah, I think can, you can hear yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, I'm the head of in Innovation at Sote Hub. Sote Hub is an incubation hub in Mombasa. And uh, at Sote Hub, we incubate innovations at uh, both idea stage or growth stage and help them to get to uh, the desired uh, levels. That is in terms of marketing, some in terms of funding, some in terms of uh, product development. So we take all these uh, products or innovators at the different levels and take them to the next desired level. Uh, Humphrey, I didn't know, I don't know if you're recording the meeting uh, because I've already started. I think I recorded it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So today we are going to talk about the startup ecosystem 
and some of the presentation skills that you should have uh, to make sure that you impress the judges and sometimes you impress the investors. Or even when you are doing a business presentation, you impress your potential customers. So uh, today we'll start with uh, the startup ecosystem. And when you come to this space, when you start talking about startup and the ecosystem, you'll be hearing of a few words. And these are some of the words that will be thrown out there. And uh, you need to grasp what each uh, word means. So you'll hear people talk about unicorns, you people talk about accelerators, incubators, venture capitalists, uh, angel investors, startups, innovation investors. All these things um, are in the startup ecosystem. It's uh, for you to know them uh, so that you don't, uh, uh, you, you get to understand what people are talking about when they're talking about uh, these words. So the startup uh, ecosystem in Kenya is uh, an emerging and developing ecosystem, uh, very young but growing and growing at a recommendable rate. And uh, in this ecosystem, there are some key players that have been able to, to shine or to be organized so that they can be able to help uh, innovators and startups in Kenya. So in Kenya, there is over 64 hubs. I think the last time I, count, I counted, that is like two or three months ago, uh, 64 innovation hubs, but uh, there are different spaces working on different things. So for innovation and uh, uh, business support, 64. In Africa, we have 643. So uh, with that, there are few associations that have been uh, formed to help and support innovation. Uh, because we are talking about uh, the ecosystem, it's important that you know about uh, this association. So the first one is the uh, Association of Countrywide Innovation Hubs. Uh, this deals with all the this is a formation of all the hubs outside Nairobi. Then there is Association of Startups and MSMEs and Ablas in Kenya. So MSME stands for small and medium enterprises. So for Enablas, that means they support uh, startups and SMEs. So that is for the Kenyan, uh, the whole country. Uh, so they support SMEs in the whole country. Then there's another organization called Afrilabs. That is the uh, organization that brings all the innovation hubs in Africa together. So when you hear of the word ecosystem, it's just a uh, interconnection or bringing the same players in the in the startup ecosystem together. So we are talking about stakeholders that uh, help support startups do uh, in a specific region do a number of things that is be able to boost their business, grow their business. Uh, if they are uh, at idea stage, they help in conceptualization and boost the birth rates of um, upcoming ventures. So um, the other one that you'll find out there is innovation. So you need to know what is innovation, what is not. So implementation of a new or significantly improved product or a process, a new marketing method or a new organization method in business practice, workplace, organization or external relations. So innovation is just simply an addition to an existing thing, a new way of doing something. So uh, people have been sending money from, they had, they had been sending money even before M-Pesa. But when M-Pesa came, it brought a new way of sending money. 
that's why it's called the most innovative uh, money transfer, mobile money transfer, and such kind of things. So just an improvement on what already exists is what we call innovation. Uh, there is an incubator. Um, most of you will uh, relate to a number of incubation hubs that you've been able to see, both at uh, the universities and maybe out there. So this is a space where they'll take you, groom you for a period of time, mostly six months. They'll give you mentorship. They'll give you an office space. You'll be able to meet different uh, types of people. And these people, you can be able to uh, network with them. You can be able to get advisory. You can be able to access sometimes new markets through them. So it's uh, an interesting space for uh, business growth, both from idea stage and uh, for startups that have already started uh, or have been in early stage. So they conceptualize, they have a prototype, and they've already pushed the product to the market for testing. Uh, so there's a difference, a small difference between incubators and accelerators in that uh, for the accelerator, the businesses are, are already built. That is, the businesses are maybe even a year or it's already a very big business, like it can be even five years into, into it, but they need to change a few aspects, like they want to change their business model, they've been uh, selling through these channels, they want to try out other things. So an accelerator is a test bed for these kind of changes that will catalyze uh, growth. Uh, of an enterprise or a startup. Then this is the most important word that you'll hear when you come to the uh, startup ecosystem, unicorns. This is a business or a startup that is valued over a billion dollars without being listed in the stock market. So these people have done it, they have the problem, they have the solution, they have the customers and they have people who are paying money and they have a future. Everyone can be able to see this is uh, a unicorn. This No, this is a business that is uh, going quite somewhere. And uh, just to name a few unicorns that we have, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Amazon, uh, which one else? Uh, Google is also a unicorn. A number of them, you know, all these uh, companies. Now TikTok is uh, part of the unicorns, uh, Uber, and all those uh, big companies that are doing over a billion dollar uh, in terms of uh, value. Then uh, there's venture capitalists. So this is a high risk investment at a very early stage for startups that have shown that they can be able to grow so uh, maybe that direction of being a unicorn so you'll find people trying to uh, fund these early stage capital uh, startups and uh, the people who do that are called venture capitalists so they are quite a number even in kenya they are coming up uh, people are no longer investing in uh, land and buildings they are doing this uh, they're trying to venture into startups then there is uh, seed funding this is uh, the amount that you receive at the early stage of uh, of a startup this uh, by then you might not even have a prototype sometimes uh, there are people who will uh, have a vision uh, that you'll be able to share with them and they'll get your vision and they'll be able to put something in in the initial stages of uh, your business. So 
now that we know the words that float around the startup ecosystem, uh, it's time that we discuss what these ecosystems are, and you need to understand a few ecosystems before we get to discuss the whole picture around the startup ecosystem in Kenya. So I want us to, to look at uh, the natural ecosystem. So the natural ecosystem, we are talking about the entire universe, that is the world as is. Then uh, it is divided into two. There is biotope and uh, bi biosynosis. So biotope, we are looking at, uh, no, let me start with uh, biosynosis. So we are looking at any living thing that is on this planet. So people in geography, biology uh, will know this. So we are talking about living things uh, in this space that we are calling the world. So the relationship between biosynosis and biotope, that's where businesses come in. So how we relate with climate, how we relate with um, our nature, how we relate with um, whatever is in this earth, that's where we start to build uh, businesses. So if you want to cover one distance, another uh, then you'll come up with a means of transport if you want to lower the temperatures then you need to find nature-based solutions so this kind of relationship is what is building businesses if you want to communicate uh, to another person then you'll need to uh, build a communication device that is e.g. a mobile phone. So the relationship between biosynosis and biotope is what has created most of the, all the innovation, not most, all the innovation that you will have in this uh, universe. Then there is um, the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So when you move from the natural ecosystem, you will land in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So when we start interacting, we start becoming entrepreneurs. And when we become entrepreneurs, then, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, so when we become entrepreneurs, then we are playing this field of na the natural ecosystem. So the entrepreneurial ecosystem is made up of various industries. So uh, when I'm talking about an industry, I'm talking about an economic sector like health, uh, like agriculture, like transport, uh, what else, like mining and all those sectors. So the entrepreneurial ecosystem is not just something to do with business. Also technology is inside the entrepreneurial ecosystem where people are doing business to uh, make end meet. So those industries, uh, a combination of those industries will make the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So it's important that we have that foundation so that we understand where this comes from. So after the natural ecosystem, the entrepreneurial ecosystem, then you'll find this uh, ecosystem, you'll maybe hear it as a startup ecosystem, innovation ecosystem, or business ecosystem. And uh, the importance of having this ecosystem and uh, more so our startup ecosystem is you'll find that it helps to conceptualize or to catalyze the birth rate of uh, businesses and startups. Uh, in this space so or in this region. So you look at the players that I talked about, the Association of Countrywide Hubs, ASEC, AfriLabs, they are all trying to come together and uh, help us in uh, in grouping or grouping ourselves, bringing our ideas together, brainstorming and giving birth to enterprises that can go to uh, the next level. 
and that includes the labs that we have, incubators and the accelerators. So then they call us players. So the ecosystem will bring together all the players in different industries, like they'll bring governments, institutions, they'll bring uh, like, this is a very uh, good uh, example of a player in the ecosystem who is bringing together uh, people to form teams and uh, build ventures. So this is what we are talking about when you're saying college uh, players. Then the ecosystem will help you connect. Uh, sometimes it governs how things are done in that, and it will also uh, mediate connect. Uh, right now, the platform that you are in, the GOL platform, you've been able to get to connect to other people, maybe from other universities, from teams, and uh, this will build a relationship even past uh, this uh, event or this competition. And then you will be able to connect to uh, a person like me. Now I know uh, more people, people who can ask me questions and I'll be free to answer. So you create your network through this. And then it boosts the growth rate in the startup ecosystem. So this is some of the benefits of why this thing uh, exists. So uh, these are the aspects or the component of the composition of uh, the ecosystem. So the players, so the players are the people who are there, who is there in the ecosystem. So uh, that is it about the players, the composition we are talking about, the institution, we are talking about um, the labs, the accelerators, the, uh, the government uh, players, like there is now a proposed ministry for startups and SMEs, uh, development and cooperatives, I think, something of the sort. Then in this ecosystem, then we need to talk about now going deeper into serious stuff. Then we need to talk about the products that are coming out of the ecosystem. What are people building? Uh, why do we have this ecosystem? What is coming out of it? So when we're looking at the ecosystem, we look at also the products that innovators are building. Then after that, then we look at what kind of support do these innovators require from the players that are there in to support or to make sure that the uh, ecosystem is helping uh, the innovators. So the players that we have in this uh, ecosystem, uh, we have incubators, accelerators. Remember, we talked about the difference between these two is number one, uh, one will take businesses that are very early, that is incubators might take um, businesses at a very early stage that will include that ideation stage. But accelerators will want someone who has already proved some concept. You are there, you've, uh, you've sold, you have customers, but now you need to boost your business. Maybe you are selling, you've stagnated, or you cannot be able to reach your potential without some aspect of help. Then there is a venture capitalist. We said these are people who uh, put in their money in the in the business or in the startup. Then there is a government. Government comes in in terms of the bodies. Like now we have uh, Kenya National Innovation Agency. Uh, then there are universities. University comes in in terms of R and D. That is research and development. Uh, the other thing is uh, university also come in in terms of uh, they are opening different uh, incubators at the institution to help support the startup ecosystem. Then financial institution also come in to help 
maybe boost these um, startups to make sure that they can be able to push or do something in the market. And then now, as we had talked earlier, we have the associations that are working in that industry. The other thing is the product. So the products that are there in the ecosystem, we need to know who is building what and what do we have. So the products that we have, we we'll be looking at uh, the products that are coming out in the market. Are we able to localize the solution that we have? So localization of solution is important so that you don't build products for markets abroad. Uh, I've seen most of the startups talking or taking uh, products like uh, say Uber and just saying because this is an exciting technology, then people would just be able to dive in and uh, use it as a solution. The same as delivery businesses, uh, same as which other business are people copying from uh, what is happening abroad. Yeah, uh, such kind of um, businesses. So uh, then there are waves of products like what I was saying about Uber and um, delivery. So you'll find something is happening, like now the hot one is um, uh, FinTech. So everyone is going to FinTech. Uh, everyone is building solution around FinTech. And you'll find that people are just will just be duplicating the same thing. But there's still a lot to be done in this FinTech industry but people are not um, coming up with their own ideas, new things, innovating in the same space. Uh, then there is another thing that is happening and uh, you need to look at it when you're getting into the space or you're getting to build uh, a new product. People are uh, recontextualizing. That is, You've already built a product, no one wants it. You try to build uh, another context where it can be used. So things are getting messy when you start with the product without uh, a genuine or a clear uh, user. Then there is the support in the industry. So number one we are looking at the funding the other thing is the market access the policy so for funding i know most of the startups here or the innovations here are not yet there so i i will not go to the types of funding that are available in the market I know this series will still continue even after this, but there are different options where how you can get funding. And uh, the only one that I would want to talk about is uh, the funding that you can get from an accelerator or the incubator that you'll be incubated at. The other one is what you can get from uh, the ecosystem is market access so you'll find that uh, when you go to an incubator they'll help you maybe reach a market that you could not uh, access or they even help you discover them uh, some markets that uh, you needed and uh, you could not get uh, the other thing is policy so for policy we are talking about government building favorable policies that can be able to help you do one thing or another. That is, you can be able to build a product. Uh, like there was a, a problem last year, but one with uh, uh, drone uh, innovations because you were not allowed to fly. Uh, they could not get uh, licenses from, is it K? 
KECC, the airways thing uh, at Wilson. Yeah. Kenya Aviation Authority, KAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah KAA. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, then there's uh, access to mentorship. So on the policy, so unless they are favorable policies, then people in certain industry will not find it easy to access this, uh, to continue this uh, innovation. So it's important that uh, you understand uh, this. Then um, you need access to mentorship. So the ecosystem will support you to access mentorship. And that is, there is number one quality. And the other thing is affordability. So there can be mentorship that is poor or there can be mentorship that you cannot afford because there are incubators that will also require you to to pay to be uh, incubated so um you can see okay time time okay so importance of these incubators and accelerators. So number one is mentorship and coaching. Uh, so th this is pure mentorship. They'll talk to you about the business. This is not motivational speaking that you need to do this to get this. This is pure mentorship or uh, purely on business. Uh, then there is hand holding. Uh, hand holding means that uh, you get someone who will help you in the industry they'll be able to show you the markets they'll be able to show you the channels that you can use to do something so that is what uh, hand holding is all about then there's industry linkage so uh, you don't just get mentorship they tell you this is where you need to go this is where you need to be taking your product so you can you have an open door to the industry then there's networking you'll meet different type of people you can be able to share ideas and you can also be able to get advisory through the sharing sorry uh, then there are advisory services available at the incubators and uh, accelerators that is regulatory compliance there is legal uh, advisory and then there are things, soft skills like accounting, ETC. So when you get to an incubator, most of the times, like let's say the innovation that you have today, you have not worked in any other organization. So it is up to the incubator to make sure that you are able to operate a business through the training that they will help you with. So they'll help you in, uh, uh, the product development, they'll help you understand everything to do with taxation. I can see most of you are developers, engineers, so uh, you are not lawyers, so you need to know the legal side of a business. Uh, you are not uh, accountants, so you need to know how um, cash is flowing in your business. So all these advisories are done uh, uh, by the incubators to make sure that you are ready in the business. Uh, so um, the incubator also becomes a test bed. So this is where you do your product development. If you came in at, uh, at an early stage, that is um, you came in at an idea stage, they'll help you even get to a prototype and most incubators will give you a space where you'll be sitting with your team to develop the product for a period of six months. Then we have the accelerators. So these are purely for, sorry, uh, growth. So growth development that is boost uh, your business, sorry, uh, boost growth. Uh, if you have a product that you need to develop a new line. That is, you want to change how the business has been operating. Uh, then this is, uh, these are the people that will be able to help you. Uh, then new markets, that is, you've been selling to uh, 
maybe customers, a group of customers X, but now uh, you feel that you want to do A, B, C, D, and D, then the incubator can help you try and uh, choose uh, or access all those other people. Then uh, there is also change in business model. It's not always uh, for you just to sell and uh, buy products. The other business model or other ways that you can use to uh, sell the product. So changing business model is one of the things that the incubator can help you in. Uh, that is, look at um, uh, YouTube. Uh, it is started as a, as a space for people to sell love videos, so you can meet spouses there. So you post a video about what you can do, then someone, uh, if you're a girl, a lady, a man, you post yourself saying something nice about you, and then uh, nowadays you cannot just say it's opposite gender. So anyone else can come in and uh, talk about and see what you've said, and then they'll be able to like you and uh, and uh, yeah, maybe text you. But that model did not work. Then uh, look at uh, people like Twitch. They also had to change these uh, different models. So different things change uh, with time. Look at Amazon. They started with selling books. Uh, look at um, uh, Netflix. Netflix actually used to send DVDs to people. Then after you finish, then you send them back. So an incubator will help you change your business model and try to uh, improve uh, your income. So then they'll also help you in fundraising. If you need more cash to boost your business, they are there to invest in that. Uh, industry linkages, we've talked about that. So that is where they uh, direct you to an industry. They open doors. Maybe the incubator has a good relationship uh, with a certain with certain industry players, and then they can be able to link you there. Uh, they'll be able maybe to, uh, uh, to take all your products, or maybe they'll be able to give you raw materials, or they may, you may be able to come together and, uh, and work and uh, improve your business. Then there's market access, so you want to track a certain market, uh, that is the work of the accelerators. Uh, I don't think this was the topic here. I might have missed something when I was making this. So this is the, the challenges in the ecosystem. So there is an in, an even geographical distribution. So you'll find that some areas don't have uh, don't have the innovation hubs. They don't have access to players. Yani, it's uh, a region that maybe they, they don't have access to technology, connectivity, all those things. So that uh, limits the number of innovation, the number of startups coming from uh, certain regions. The other thing is the national silos. So a silo is uh, like a can. So if you put different cans, uh, you limit movement from one place to another. So this applies to borders. So you find that it might not be easy for a Kenyan to go and uh, sell their product in Egypt. It becomes hard because of the different policies. Uh, the other one is access to finance. If you try to, even if you had a very innovative solution today and uh, you left um, and uh, went to a bank, they'll not give you money because it is very hard. We don't have uh, we don't have um, some policies around financing innovations. Uh, so it might end there 
as a prototype because you're not uh, access finance. And then the policies that we have, uh, like the one that I was saying for uh, the drone team. So it is important that you know uh, the policies so that they don't limit you uh, in whatever you're doing. So do we have any questions about the startup ecosystem? If someone had a question, maybe I have a question. She can come up with an answer. I have a question. Yes, yes. Now, um, my question is: Can can a startup fund itself, or in, you need to get funding from um, the, the VCs? Can, can a startup just start and then pick from any any funds that they are generating, and then they just fund themselves? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, a startup can have uh, the natural funding. That is, it can be able to generate money. So, for a startup with a very nice product, uh, they can be able to do that. Why people require uh, VC money is if what is gener being generated by the business uh cannot push it as fast as you you'd like because you know up there there are people who are looking at how that market is behaving and they might have uh better financial muscle than than you in your business so uh, the reason for why people bring in investors is to make sure that you get the market faster than the rest so you might want to boost it, but it can also take the natural course where you reinvest what you get. All right, thank you. I have a question as well. I would like to, to know when to if if we 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 can keep uh um, there's another question from asha she can go on and ask the question yeah all right so i was saying as i was saying i'd like to know uh if uh we 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 are obliged to keep uh working with incubators or accelerators once even though we we, we start growing bigger is it uh relevant to keep working with them or at a given stage we can stop working with them i don't know the other question yeah. is okay yeah, that's, yeah. The, other, the other question is uh when is is the appropriate time to uh to join an incubator or to look for a an accelerator all right thanks So I'll start with the last question. So the best time to join an accelerator, or let's start with an incubator. So the uh, the best time to start is when you are conceptualizing. So uh, when you're building your initial team, it's the best time to join an uh, an incubator. Why? Because they will help you shape the solution that is you'll be able to know if you're building for uh, a certain group that has a problem that requires the solution that you're proposing they'll be able to help you in uh, market testing talking to customer at uh, early stage so that you can align your product with the customers uh, the other thing is you'll be able to form a team that is um, that has 
the same attitude because attitude is what will kill um, your your team even before the skill so even if you have a skill founder with um, a bad attitude toward the startup uh, then you'll not go far so those are soft skills that you need to learn as early as possible uh, in the in the incubators the other thing is uh, when do you stop or will you continue working with the uh, incubators forever no um, each program each uh, in, uh, incubation or acceleration program is timed and uh, as i said mostly six months so in six months they require you to graduate and leave uh, their space so that they can take another cohort it's just the same as uh, you cannot be in the university forever there is a time that you will have to graduate so maybe in as a last one yeah because i know that uh, they are supporting you and they are helping you as well what are they supposed to take from you now are you supposed to pay them or i don't know how 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 is it going to work now so the models are different and uh, most of it is uh, they'll ask you for equity and uh, equity is um, they want to get a percentage of the of the startup that is if you make you're making a uh, hundred if you you have a very good business they'll take uh, out of a hundred, then uh, they'll take a small percentage. Uh, then, if you cannot present your case well, the problem is not presenting itself very well, then they'll take higher than than the minimum. <laughs> Let me just say that I don't want to give figures. Right. It means they are they're like investors, right? Yeah, you know, they're investing in you to give you space and everything that they are doing, then they're investing in you. But there are others that will ask you to pay for advisory. OK, thank you so much. Thank you. Any other question? I have a question. Yeah. Now, in 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 any any transactions or communications will be done um, for me as an innovator or someone who is new in uh, the startup ecosystem. Yeah. Do I need do I need any lawyer or I just go 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 around um, maybe asking for funding from people and then I, I just assume that. Uh, later yes. on they won't arose any any issues do i need a lawyer yes and yeah you will need uh, to get legal advice legal advice is very important because uh, when you're getting into this kind of contracts with people uh most of the time you'll find the uh individuals will try to uh to con you or to play some fishy fishy game uh, because they know you don't understand some most of the time used uh, the terms used in business so when you have um, someone uh, with uh, maybe a lawyer uh, who will give you legal advice uh, then you are safer and uh, this legal advice is part of the things that uh, incubators are supposed to provide. So if you are in incubation hub, then they should be able to support you in terms of uh, legal advice. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have a question. 
Yes, yes, Jacob. So when you are joining a, an incubator, do you join as a single person or as a team? It depends who on the innovation at that point. If you have a team, then you'll join as a team. If you just uh, have the startup as a person, then you'll join it as a person. Okay, thank you. Humphrey, um, I can see time is uh, much gone and um, I still have some presentation to do. And, uh, on that, uh, on the pitching, what do we do? End of and complete the presentation. Uh, yes, they will stick around and uh, to the end of the presentation. Okay, I'll I'll try to make it easy. So, yeah. uh, if I can just take one minute. Uh, if there is anyone with a question, prepare just one minute. Um, coming back, just one minute, please. Yeah, let's just stick around for some few minutes and yeah, we get to see how well you can present, how, how how can you make your presentation attractive or interesting to your investors or maybe to the judges. Yeah, just stick around for some few minutes and we will be done. Yep. And in case of any question, you can just ask or just put it on the chat. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah, ready and set. Yes. So I think uh, now people understand uh, how the ecosystem plays. If you have more questions, please hit me on. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, I'll be able to answer your questions. Uh, so, um, in my previous life, I've been um, working at uh, one of the universities, and uh, I've been uh, the patron of uh, the Microsoft Tech Club, and. Uh, I've been able to work with a group of uh, very good students. I was working with the team from Student Kimathi, and uh, I am happy to, to have been working there for the time that I did. In the time that I was working there, I was able to work with uh, around five teams that went to the Emerging Cup uh, regional finals. That is the EMEA finals. And uh, one of the team made me proud and they were second runners up. Uh, first, okay, second runners up. That is number three. And uh, at that stage, seeing uh, startups from uh, your space doing that, then uh, you're very proud of yourself and you're very proud of the team. So I want to give tips from this and many more. I brought in the Imagine Cup because 
uh, that is something that most of you know or will be able to know in the next few months. I know uh, the application are just around the corner, so check out for that. So I want us to look at how professional pitching is done. What do we want to see? What uh, the judge is looking at? Uh, who needs to be involved? And how do we make sure that the presentation that we make is a winning presentation? So in pitching, I think pitching is the easiest thing that uh, you can be able to to do and uh, if you've ever attended a physical hackathon sometimes you leave the space complaining uh, because there are people who did not have anything into quotes uh, as you think their product was not that good but the way they presented it they won uh, the event. And then you're just asking yourself, hi, how, why did the judges give them? But it's because they know where the points are. Uh, and that is what we need to discuss today. So uh, I'll be easy. So I'll uh, encourage as many questions as possible. And uh, we'll do that in the next. Uh, your servant. That's Max. So the first thing, have a nice introduction. And by a nice introduction, I'm talking about this is what you do. Uh, this is not uh, uh, what is contained in the slide. This is you as a person. Have a nice introduction. Talk nicely. Introduce yourself. Introduce your team, the people that will be pitching. How you come into the stage also matters. The first 30 seconds of a presentation is what determines if the crowd would just go back to scrolling on their phones or they'll stick with you uh, for the next three minutes that you've been given. So, and it's worse when you are supposed to send a video for people to listen. So you need to capture people's attention uh, at this early stage of the presentation. So number one, have uh, number two, have a very good tagline. So when you have a nice introduction, then the tagline will be able to pull people and uh, they'll start getting interested. They start getting interested. Where are we going with this? Uh, the next thing in your presentation, create a scenario, create a persona, create a situation where people can be able to empathize. To empathize is people can be able to get into someone's shoes. They can be able to understand what you're saying. Again, in this creating the scenario, the word empathize is the most important thing. I want you to sell the problem more than the solution. When you sell the problem, then the solution becomes very easy to sell. The solution is just something that comes to close the gaps that you opened when we were talking about the problem. If you are talking about just a simple thing, imagine a place where children don't go to school because they are wild animals, nini they, all those things. Everyone is expecting you to give a solution where children have already gone to school. So if we accept and we are able to internalize the problem, then you've already won at that point. We are expecting you to come and close the gaps. So you need to close in on the problem even before you tell us about the solution that you want to 
offer. Call people to action. So uh, you've told us about a story of how children in a certain area are not going to school because of uh, wild animal attacks. Then you tell us, come with us to a journey to make sure that every uh, child gets to uh, gets gets education, something of the sort. Everyone will want to know how are we coming in and how are you solving this? So you are creating interest bit by bit. So people are interested, people are willing to know how you're doing it. And this, at the end of it all, will be able to 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 help you uh, win uh, the judges. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Use numbers and try to visualize these numbers. Unless you show that different uh, a good number of uh, students are not going to school, one student cannot be a problem that we need to solve. We need to take this, the, the child, um, uh, one student, we need to take that student out of that place. <laughs> I don't want to say this, but you are creating a, a, a situation where it looks that this student is the problem. But when you give us numbers, numbers that can be able to be verified, let's say um, according to the daily nation, uh, 500 uh, students from Nakuru cannot go to school because uh, the fans of the, Nairobi, uh, the Nakuru National Park uh, is not electric anymore then we are looking at 500 students. The government and everyone will be able to, 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 to come in. And the fact that you're using verified data, no one can question you uh, in, uh, your present, uh, in your presentation. Because also the question that the judges will ask themselves uh, also, uh something that you need to avoid there they don't need to want to think much about what you've said uh then use polite language and uh, have confidence uh that is if you are shy in your team let everyone understand that you are not as confident to talk let them give you the confidence, train with them, talk to your team until everyone agrees this is a perfect presentation. If uh, you'll, you'll find some people are better presenters than the others. That does not mean that this person cannot talk, but this is maybe a talent that is that they have in their team. And uh, that is one of the tactics that you'll find uh, people using to win uh, this, uh, this presentation. So if you can have that, then uh, if you can discuss as a group practice a number of time until you build confidence, that becomes very good. Then have a script, write things down. This is what we need to say. Uh, this is the flow of things and uh, share among us yourself. This is your part, this is my part. These are the things that we need covered in our presentation. These are the key highlights. This is where we get points and all those things. It's very important that you have a structured script of how things will go. Avoid buzzword, that is a lot of jargon uh, that are industry specific. You'll find in the presentation, they might bring a judge who is purely on business. They want to know how this uh, presentation or this innovation will make money. 
So if you use a lot of jargon, then you lose them completely. So it is important that you make it simple. Everyone can be able to understand. Although there is a technology part, that is where you can use industry specific words. So the slides that we will have, these are the slides that you'll have. We'll go through them one by one and uh, then we'll be done. So the first one is uh, the cover. So the cover, you'll have the name. So that is the name of the uh, startup or the innovation. Uh, then you'll have the names. Oh, you'll have the title, sorry. Uh, then the names. You'll have the website, or um, if you don't have the website, uh, maybe it's on link to something or the logo. The second one is the problem. I cannot insist on this. If you don't sell us the problem, if you don't make us understand the problem, we shall never be so sure about the solution that you're giving us. If you are not thirsty, water is not as important as when you are thirsty. I hope this is in the understood. If you don't um, sell the problem, then uh, it becomes uh, hard to sell the solution. Even if you used a very good technology, you still not score as much as required. So the problem is more important than the use of technology when it comes to uh, solving problems in this kind of competition. But for learning purposes, the solution and the technology becomes better. Uh, but when you are in a problem solving context, then the problem is bigger than uh, the technology and the uh, solution that you provided. So the problem, we are looking at the pain uh, and what is something that can can people relate to what you're saying? So it should not be as long. Just make it two to four sentences so there can be a number of problems. Don't, uh, don't go past four. Make the problem as easy for people to understand. Let us know what you're looking at. Uh, should be very clear, uh, specific, and understandable. Uh, so again, numbers, 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 numbers. So when you're talking about the problem, so uh, you talk about the numbers, this number of people cannot access water, this number of people cannot go to school, uh, this number of people are attacked uh, uh, maybe day and night, uh, this number of uh, road accidents, um, lack of rainfall in these areas have made farmers not to uh, harvest, uh, post-harvest losses uh, due to rainfall during the harvesting season has made all these things that you you want to come in and uh, help. Those things need to be shown, be clear, and also tell us how many bugs are lost and where are you getting that. So in this slide, you can say according to Daily Nation, uh, one million bags of maize go to waste due to post loss harvest, uh, post loss, uh, post harvest loss, sorry. Um, and this is due to one, two, three. So you can be able to explain. We can see the numbers. You can even keep that screenshot on the screen. So we are able to see that these numbers have been verified. This is true. You know, it just creates a mental picture and we can be able to relate to what people are saying. Uh, because again, the people who will be judging you live in this society, as long as they've not heard the story, then we will not be able to relate. And when we see the numbers, then we also 
uh, create a mental picture that you even researched uh, so much. Anyway, it's interesting when you solve the problem. There has been a major uh, misconception about who the customer can be. So number one, it, it is not a must that you are talking about individuals. So you can also be discussing about the number of organization going, uh, having losses in different, uh, with different issues. Uh, yeah, it's very important that you can be able to help with that. So the last point is what I'm saying, uh, verify with data and a lot of visualization. Sorry for that, I needed to switch off that one. Our solution, make sure that whatever you stated, if you stated the number one problem is lack of water, the first solution that you need to show us is how do you bring water? Make sure that they are, you can be able to match what you said and the solution that you're providing. Here, tell us about the features that you have that help solve the problem. So if you are bringing a, an, uh, a solar powered, uh, pump that will help people uh, get water from wells, from boreholes, all those things. Those features are the things that will make this session uh, or section interesting. Make it simple and clear. Show how the solution works, how these features uh, solve these different uh, problems and avoid the technical jargons that we, as we had talked about. Then uh, there is market validation. We said uh, in the example where we are saying a student cannot go to school uh, because of wild animal. When we are talking about a thousand or a hundred students, that is a problem. When you are talking about the student, you'll make it look bad as if the student is the one who uh, is in the wrong place. So uh, you need to do some validation and uh, uh, the data should uh, be able to help you with that. Also in validation, you need to talk to a few people. If you've already done uh, your prototype, test it with a few people. These testimonies need to come here. Uh, this is what someone uh, someone said, and uh, that makes uh, your case stronger. So I don't want to. This is uh, this has uh, a number of jargons. Um, the market size, there's the total addressable market, that is the total market that exists. But what I'd like you to do is try to get the amount that is spent in that uh, industry. Let's say you are talking about uh, cooking cakes, just an example outside that everyone will uh, relate. If you are talking about cooking cakes and you want to build a bakery in Kenya, then the total addressable market is the amount of cakes that are eaten per day in Kenya. So that is the total addressable market. So the amount of money that is spent on cakes uh, per day, then that is a market that you need to handle per day. So in your industry, then you need to show that the total addressable market is around this amount. This you can get from your competitors. So what are the other people who are already doing what you're doing, 
who are they addressing? What's the size of the market that they have? Who, what are they doing and who are they serving? So if you can be able to get the amount of money that is flowing around that industry, that's how you market size. But when you get the total addressable market, you need to get other two markets. I don't want to go too much into uh, those uh, calculations um, because when you get to, from total addressable market, there's the total serviceable, uh, obtainable market. So that is what you can be able to reach. So you you look at the total addressable market, that is the whole country, but you find yourself, uh, you are in Kisumu. So that limits you to sell maybe to, uh, to Rukana, to other places. So the uh, obtainable market is not as big as possible. It is not uh, as, uh, there is a market, no one is asking, uh, is, uh, is telling you not to sell or no one is um, uh, regulating uh, the areas that you can cover but your ability uh, you cannot be able to do that but also uh, being in Kisumu there is also the attainable market uh, there is the one that you can be able to uh, obtain the whole of the, the market then there is a small piece that you can be able to service. So there is uh, the market that you can be able uh, to uh, service. So that's the last one. So all those, uh, if you can look at that, so if you can Google or write somewhere, you can look at TAM, T-A-M, SOM, S-O-M, and uh, SAM. S A M. So those three, you can be able to look at them, and uh, you'll see the difference. But uh, I don't want to go into details of this. You, but it's important that you know it's a slide that exists in the presentations. Then uh, there's a business model. Uh, you need to tell us, as much as we are funding you, how will you make money? So how you make money is as important as the whole pitch. How valuable is this thing? Because you might be solving a problem that no one will pay uh, to solve. Then that becomes uh, shaky in your presentation. So how you monetize this thing, uh, your product. So there are a number of business models. The first uh, you can talk about um, uh, selling uh, software as a service. You can talk about uh, one of sale of the product. You can talk about subscription me uh, model. Then you can talk about their freemium models where people give services for free, but when they need to upgrade, then they pay a certain amount. Then there's the funny model that uh, like Facebook, where you become the product, the users become the product, and you're able to uh, sell their data somewhere else. Uh, go to market strategy. How will you roll out the product? So how will you take it to your customer? So this is important. Uh, if you are to sell the product, how will it go? out there. Then there is uh, competition. Because people have been surviving, what have they been using before uh, your proposed solution? So tell us about it. How do they position uh, themselves? That is your competitors. Why? How are they? How are they in that industry? Uh, what are they doing? And uh, how are you going to change that? Uh, who else plays a role in that market? Do we have regulators that such that you can not just come in and take a position in that market? Tell us about your competitive advantage. So competitive advantage is how you outperform your competitors. 
And two things uh, you need to look at here. Uh, the degree of advantage and the sustainability of the advantage. Uh, the degree of the advantage we are talking about, how good are you such that uh, your competitors cannot be able to do what you're doing? And for how long, for how long can you stay with uh, that advantage before they catch up with you? So when you are talking about competition, you can have such a table. Uh, the first column here, you say we can, so we can be able to do this, and they can't, so the competition can't. And then you also compare from the side, then you say they can, and we cannot. So it's a simple table with that. So this is what informs the kind, the strength of the product that you have. Uh, then for this competition, this has uh, quite some point. So talk about the technology. Here you can use your jargon, the buzzwords in the, uh, in the industry. Uh, make sure that uh, you can explain why you used uh, that technology. Why is it the appropriate one? Uh, and then you should be able to align with the trim profile. That is uh, what your team is capable of doing, what you say they can do, then uh, is what uh, you have. This is where all the mistakes that you have done, you can be able to come back on this slide. So when you are given a chance to do a demo this is where you show them what you've been able to do make sure that uh, your demo works you can be able to show them uh, in your presentation make sure that they can be able to see everything about the technology the technology is not as important as the solution for this case we are we are also learning it's important but how you used that technology in, even in this case, uh, we'll take more point than uh, the name of the technology itself. So uh, make sure that it works and the solution is as flawless at, as it can be. Then uh, the other thing, so show your team uh, a small uh, peak and uh, their profile, that is what they can be able to do, their profession. Uh, then um, this should be able to align with what you said in the profession slide, uh, the technology slide, sorry. And uh, at the end, if you have time, when we were talking about validation, we talked about you giving a few people to use uh, the prototype, and uh, now that you they have used the prototype, if you have something that they said about the solution that you have, uh, give us the story. Tell us what they said. If you can be able to record them, they said this need to be improved. Uh, they said uh, this could be perfect. Uh, one of the the people that we were interacting with said they'll start using it, and they are now using it. They if it's an app, um, they've not even deleted it from their phones since, uh, or uninstalled it since we last uh, gave them. So, and they are waiting for uh, more updates. So that's it. I think um, I'm done with that section. I hope you've learned something. I'll take a few questions. I've seen that uh, time is much gone. Um, so please, if you have a question. OK, I, I do have one question. Yes. Um, okay, I think I was thinking more of uh, 
Huh. Uh, let's say, is there, let's say, like, a, okay. hmm. let me phrase this well first. In the Microsoft Hackathon Challenge, are there like videos that someone let's say, can go back and watch of, uh, let's say, the competitors pitch their pitches so that, let's say, you can you can go back and watch, let's say, how a good pitch looked like, for example. So, is there something like that? Or are they not recorded when they're doing their pitches during the competition? Uh, so, uh, they are... Let me... Let me... Let me just write one. So you you just go to YouTube and uh, look for this. So Imagine Cup, they uh, they have multiple of them. You can watch um, from 2019. They have uh, different series of Imagine Cup. You'll be able to see how people pitched in the three minutes that uh, they are given and what they said. So all these, all those uh, slides are supposed to be covered in three minutes. And I guess my second question would be, have you ever seen a pitch that was, the idea was good, but the way it was delivered was so bad that the, uh, the, I, the whole pitch was just thrown away by the, by the, and by the people who are listening to. And what would you say that the mistakes that they made what would you say they are? What would you? What would be the idea? What would be the mistakes you identified in the way they delivered their pitch to us to get them to be thrown out? For example. Yeah, I've seen a number, uh, not even one. I've seen a number of them. So when you miss to when you miss on the problem, when you cannot tell us what uh, your solution is coming to do then you lose everyone. And uh, especially when you have a very good group of judges, they listen to the problem even uh, more than the solution. So uh, if you miss it on the problem, then you'll have an issue. Then there was a team, uh, and that was um, in, in June, in June, yes, in June. They, the guy was so proud uh, of himself. He didn't even want to answer the question. He felt like the innovation was up there. And that is a response that I got from the judges. The team was good, but uh, yeah, you know, the judges are also human too. But uh, in terms of Products. There are so many people who have a solution in search of a problem. Uh, you think something is fancy. Uh, you do it very well, uh, but if it is not matching any problem, even if you use a very good technology, then, you know, because we need to be realistic with the solution that we have. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Okay. okay. Um, any question? Uh, I'll say this uh, before maybe the next person. If you want to, to be ahead of uh, others in the presentation, you need to look at a few things. Uh, I'll say, number one, what we call industry knowledge. Know a few things about that industry. If you're looking at health, uh know what happens in the hospital if uh, let's say you are looking at um, a simple thing like a management system a record keeping system you need to know what happens from stage one from the moment the person uh, comes to the hospital the moment they enter the gate do we have any records that we need to see there but 
don't just sit somewhere and assume things. Uh, if you are doing something around agriculture, then you you need to know uh, how farmers harvest. Where do they keep their maize? Where do they sell? At um, in the last two years, were there cries of losses? Did they make money? How much was it averaging trading at? Don't let a judge ask a question that you could have already answered in your presentation. So when uh, you let someone ask you a question that you could have already covered, then you don't sound sure. And the other thing avoids words like maybe, uh, we might, uh, I think, it shows uncertainty with the team. The team has not researched uh, something. Uh, you are asked, uh, uh, how was the rain uh, that you are saying farmers were affected? How, uh, which months did not rain? Uh, oh, maybe it was June. Oh, I think August. Those two words, you are off, you are done. Anyway. I'm not threatening you. <laughs> uh, any questions? Humphrey, I think uh, people um, might be tired or happy with the session. So back to you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Any other question? Yeah, so if anyone would like to reach uh, or talk to me, we can connect on uh, LinkedIn at uh, Kenneth J here, so you can find me there. Or, uh, yeah, or, uh, on Twitter at uh, Startup Shark. Thank you. Thank you so much. Back to you, Humphrey. And uh, welcome to Mombasa's. Uh, oh, uh, Mombasa. actually, one question. By the way, uh, as in Sote Habi Kuapi Mombasa. Usually, uh, sometimes yeah. I find myself around there. So, exactly. Nico, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, opposite Nyali Police. So, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, Just opposite Nyali Police. That's where we are. Okay. Yeah. Very nice views. And guys, I have a hackathon from, um, sorry, Humphrey. Uh, this is a physical hackathon from uh, 18th to 20th of November. I think that's enough time you guys can make it down here. We have a fun weekend, 48 hours of coding. No sleep. Mutalalam kirudi, kirudi kukwen. Uh, so uh, I'll be sharing that on my socials. So they have you can follow us so that you can find this information. Yeah. And uh, I'll also be sharing with Julia and Humphrey so that uh, that information can pass to you. So register, register, register. Kujeni, we hack Mombasa. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Humphrey, back to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Jenny. That was a brilliant session we have had there. So I guess, hey, okay, I don't even know what to say, but it was an awesome session. Yeah, I myself have loved it, and maybe okay, even others can testify that it was a great session we have had there. Okay, some I can see some even asking for a third session. Maybe we can organize that later. So, but for today, we wrap it up there. So maybe if anyone has a question, can continue to reach out to us. Yeah. And uh, for the uh, for the recording, I'll be sharing with you maybe in the course of today or tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining, and uh, yeah, continue enjoying your evening and uh, your hackathon. Continue hacking your solution. Yeah, build something good. Prepare your presentation well, as you have been told. Yeah, looking forward to see you during the presentation and see the awesome presentation that you'll be having. Yeah, great. Oh, go hack it. Hey, thank you.